Welcome everyone to the Dr. Abs HealthCast. I'm your host, Dr. Brian Episolo, aka Dr. Abs. And on today's show, we have Risa Group, who is a functional nutritionist and certified autoimmune coach in private practice in Newport Beach, California. She has always been passionate about nutrition and good health. Risa was so concerned about purity that she made her children's baby food from scratch. Today, she is passionate about cooking and creating healthy, nutritious food. She works with a wide array of clients for professional athletes, adults, and kids to the biggest loser from season four. Risa works with issues like diabetes, autoimmune disease, cancer, digestion, thyroid, and hormone imbalances, to name a few. Risa firmly believes that the body can heal itself with whole foods we obtain from the earth and sees living proof of that in her office each day. She looks at root causes using functional nutrition guidelines, blood, and stool tests, and knows that weight loss is a side effect of wellness. I'm excited to talk to Risa, so let's bring on Risa Group. Welcome to the show, Risa. How are you doing today? I'm awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Pleasure, pleasure to have you on. I'm happy to have you on because you are a functional nutritionist and certified autoimmune coach. And I know you have an amazing story to tell. So if you wouldn't mind, just go ahead and tell the audience a little bit about yourself and what you've gone through in your life. Yeah. So I am a functional nutritionist. So I'm always looking at root causes. I'm looking at prevention. I love data. Um, You know, the four pillars of functional medicine, functional nutrition are those in in addition to the um, interconnectedness of the whole body. So if we have headaches, it might have something to do with the gut, so on and so forth. Everything is connected. Um, My story um, in a a nutshell is basically, I um, was always kind of obsessed with nutrition. I always thought it was so interesting. I always had people in my home that were always on a diet and foods were fattening. And I was always so amazed, like, why is that? And why do you eat this sometimes and not sometimes? And and nobody was particularly heavy, but everybody was perpetually on a diet, you know? And I remember my grandma going to the fat farm once a year and I grew up to realize she was going to Canyon Ranch once a year. (laughs) So I was like, what is the deal? Like what, why? And it's always the women in my house who were talking about this. So it just kind of fascinated me. And I studied a lot of nutrition. I ended up going to college for business and I went into sports marketing and I worked for some professional sports teams. And I just kept reading nutrition books because I was fascinated with nutrition yeah. and um, how it makes us feel. And, and, and there's so many different eating types. And, um, and then I, um, I uh, got married and I conceived a child right away and it was always great and everything. And then when I was trying to conceive my second child, um, I couldn't do it and I just couldn't get pregnant. And then I did, and then I would lose the baby right away. And then it happened a couple of times. Yeah. And it was super frustrating. Like, why is my body not functioning? Cause you know, our two main goals as living organisms are to survive and procreate. I was going to procreate. I'm like, what is the deal? And I ate really well. So um, I did a lot of digging. And then I went to uh, finally ended up at a um, infertility specialist who said, oh, you've got this underachieving thyroid. So Mm -hmm. let's just give you a little pill. I said, well, how long do I take this medication for? He goes, oh, you know, every day. I said, no, no, no. For how long? And he said, oh, for the rest of your life. Oh, I went, what? Well, I should be taking something synthetic so that my body, but my body's like born to produce this. So I'm thinking, aren't we wondering why it's not producing it? And I asked him why. And he goes, oh, it doesn't matter. Just take the pill. So <laughs> I did it for a little bit. And then I started to compile a list and I thought, why is it that I am not able to conceive? And um, I started what was the to- official diagnosis of your thyroid. I was a hypothyroid. So I had, I, I was hypothyroid. I don't even know if he checked antibodies, but, um, years later, after I did have my son and a healthy pregnancy and everything was great. Um, I went just to get blood done and I went to a naturopath and they, uh, did all the blood labs and it turns out I had Hashimoto's. Mm. So, you know, I might've had Hashimoto's at that time, or I might've just had second stage or first stage of autoimmunity where your antibodies are not quite present or your symptoms aren't present, but I don't know. It was a long time ago, but when I got diagnosed with Hashimoto's, I thought, oh gosh, this, the buck stops here. Like I've got to re- figure out why this is happening. Why yeah. is my own body attacking my thyroid? You know, it doesn't like my thyroid. What's happening, right? Yeah, of course. 
So I went through that and um, I couldn't at that time find any kind of a checklist. Like, why would I get this? So I created my own. I did extensive research and, um, and I just compiled a whole list. It's in my book, Food Frame, of why we would possibly get autoimmunity. And, you know, a third of it is genetics, which I had. My mother had Hashimoto's, but I don't even think we knew at the time. And then a lot of it is leaky gut. Then there's a various uh, uh, things that can happen to, to trigger it, right? Our genetics typically load the gun and our environment and our lifestyle pulls the trigger. Gotcha. So you're yeah. saying two thirds of it can be handled personally. I mean, obviously genetics, it is what it is, but what kind of, I love what you said there because you seem to be inquisitive. You ask questions, you wrote things down, like, some people out there just take the word of their doctors like, OK, they might have been taking that pill for the rest of their life, which would have been unfortunate. But you actually investigated. So what did you find with all this testing? And like, I know you mentioned that you you took supplementation and, you know, you obviously you changed your diet. Like, what did you find in that exploratory phase of your journey? Oh, gosh, I found so much. So I found out that toxins were a huge disruptor mm. and I was uh, already going through nutrition school at the time. And I was really very toxic aware, but I don't think I was as toxic educated as I certainly am now. But, um, you know, the, the sad fact is this is a new number, but the FDA has approved 86,000 chemicals for us to use way more than any other country on the planet. Wow. Um, we are really very, very much for sale. And so we get about 2000 um, toxins approved per year, regardless of who's in the White House. And the sad thing is that most of them aren't even tested. They're not tested for interactions. Um, and, and, and toxins together. So it's, it's very, um, we have to be very diligent about our toxic load. So toxins can really build up. It affects the liver. It affects the whole body. Um, a lot of toxins in heavy metals and breast implants, um, a lot of implants, you know, even, I don't care what the, what the breast implant is, is filled with, but the casing around it is, um, it compiles about 40 heavy metals and toxins that you're just gleaning every single day. It's just leaching into the body. So um, that's a really great source of just a chronic um, toxic load. Um, so toxins were definitely a thing that opened my eyes. Um, gluten, as you said, I did change my diet drastically. I took gluten out of my diet uh, and gluten is highly inflammatory. Uh, not everybody is gluten intolerant, but we do know that gluten helps create tight junctions, which open up those holes in the leaky gut. Um, one of the major contributors to autoimmunity is leaky gut. And we get that we only have one layer of epithelial cells in the intestinal lining and a little bit of bili there to protect us. And once that's eroded, then we're just open. We've got these wide holes and all these proteins and stress and organ malfunctions and pathogens and all kinds of things go into the system. They go in through the back door into the bloodstream and the body says, who are you? You're, yeah. um, you're the enemy. So it starts creating antibodies. And then we start to see food intolerances. Um, I'm working with somebody I met with her today who just is like down to like six foods. She can't eat anything because she just has a horrible reaction, very bad stomach aches and nausea, throwing up. I mean, it's, she's got these gaping holes. So I'm trying desperately. We have to go very slowly because she's so sick. Um, and we, she's today when I spoke to her, she's, she's added two more food. So um, it's, it, it really is a thing. This is not uncommon. I work with a lot of very sick people that way. And these are just huge holes. And if we don't in conventional or allopathic medicine, if we don't look to even see if we have these huge holes, you know, what do we do, right? You go to the yeah. allergy. They end up sending the allergist sends people to me like this all day. Yeah. So you have to get, get the information. So I do extensive blood tests and stool tests to see where are we? Do we have pathogens? Do we have H. pylori? Do we have, you know, pathogens like blastocystis hominis that can cause Hashimoto's? Do we have um, uh, autoimmune triggers that can cause rheumatoid arthritis or ankylosing spondylitis or colitis? You know, there's usually a root cause to that. So um, I'm always looking at the data. I like a lot of information to see what is the root cause. So 
Um, I compiled that list together, vitamin D, MTH4, gene mutation, you know, those are the kind of things that can trigger bad sleep, lots of stress, chronic stress, chronic um, sugar, alcohol, um, lifestyle really plays a part in that as well. So I, I just went through the checklist, Epstein-Barr virus, check, I had that, you know, I just had everything on that list. And I addressed every single one. It took me about a year to chelate all the mercury out of my system. Wow. Were there particular supplements that you were on? Because obviously you mentioned the, the gluten-free diet and, and all that. Um, was there any particular supplements that helped you out in addition to the vitamin D? Um, absolutely. Um, I have a Fab Five that I use for anybody with autoimmunity because when you're in the state of autoimmunity, you're you're in a cytokine storm. So, which means that your, in your T cells, your T reg cells, your TH17 gets activated. So you start to produce lots of inflammation and that's what it is. It's systemic inflammation. And you you just find a body part, a gland, an organ or a tissue to attack. And when you're in the state of autoimmunity, regardless of what it is, um, you're in a chronic state of inflammation. So I'm, I'm going to take a fire hose and try and get that fire out instead of like a water gun. Yeah. Take one vitamin D a day. Like, so I'm giving you turmeric, glutathione, resveratrol, omega, my omega max and vitamin D, my D3 ultra that has vitamin K that really moves the needle. So I have a fab five for um, autoimmunity that for sure people need to take so that they quell that inflammation. I'm about 10 points away from reversing my Hashimoto's. I was at 1,456, wow. um, 10 points away. So I have done a tremendous amount of work and through my diet without gluten and without dairy, um, minimal, if not any sugar, um, re decreasing my toxic load, exercise, sleep. And um, I addressed all those things on my root, my root cause list. And real quick, just for the audience, can you repeat those five just so they know? So you, you, these are the fab five, like you said, that you would recommend for anybody with any type of autoimmune disease, no matter what it is. Absolutely. It's an anti-inflammatory protocol. Okay. My turmeric max, okay. which is really, really good, very high in curcumin, which is the, um, the, uh, the, the property that quells inflammation. Uh, my omega max of fish oil, omega. Um, okay. glutathione, which is our master antioxidant. So that protects us from any oxidative stress. That's anything that wants to come into the body and cause disease. Um, and my, what did I say? Resvero, uh, resveratrol, tumero, omega, glutathione, and vitamin D, my D3 uh, with uh, D3 ultra, which has vitamin K, which moves the needle. Amazing. Amazing. So like not, I love what you talked about there. You talked about the blood work, the stool tests, and, and, you know, this is all part of being a functional nutritionist. Like, can you let the people know why they would go to somebody like you that is a functional nutritionist compared to, you know, maybe a traditional nutritionist or a dietitian who maybe would just focus on the diet portion of their uh, illness? Yeah. So a registered dietitian or any kind of a dietitian or nutritionist conventional or allopathic related is really going to move off of a government plate, right? They're going to take the government plate or the government pyramid, either one, they've changed names a couple of times, and they're going to say, go low fat. And they're going to say, um, you know, this is your servings of, it's a generic one size fits all. Mm. I do not do that at all. I customize. So my methodology is called food frame. And that's the methodology I've created in my practice that I've been working for decades, treating all types of people, professional athletes, you name it. And we're all unique, right? Yeah, I mean, Netflix absolutely. tells us what kind of movies we should be watching. Spotify tells us what kind of music we like. We should be eating according to our own personal customized eating plan. And what does that mean? It turns out that we should all be eating according to our health status. So if our current health status is diabetic or insulin resistant, I am going to do everything I can to eat to bring that down because we can do that with food. If we've got chronic gastrointestinal symptoms like chronic bloating or chronic um, diarrhea or constipation, I'm most likely going to recommend a low FODMAP eating program. Now that's more of an elimination program. It's 30 to 90 days. Once we hop off, the, hop off of that, I would recommend either a paleo or low lectin. Um, AIP is the autoimmune protocol. 
that is what I'm putting anyone who has an autoimmune disease. If you feel like your whole family has autoimmunity, you haven't been tested positive for autoimmunity, and you just want to quell the inflammation, that's also a great way to go. It's again, a, a 30 to 90 day elimination protocol. I have low lectin and vegetarian and paleo and keto. So I, my book food frame highlights, it starts with my detox because detoxing is incredibly essential to get those toxins out of the system. We storm in the liver, we storm in fat cells and fat tissue. So yes, we lose weight, but I believe that weight loss is a side effect of wellness. So I'm always focusing on wellness. Once you finish the detox in two weeks and hopefully you've got some blood work and stool tests by then, then you can take the quiz on my website and find out which food frame you are. And so in the book, I highlight the six typical main diet types that I recommend for people that I work with. And they pretty much work for everybody, depending on what your health status is. Gotcha. And I mean, what would you say, like for just the average person out there that maybe doesn't have a health issue per se, like what would you say out of, you mentioned a couple there, you know, you mentioned keto, paleo, the autoimmune protocol, vegan, low FODMAP, uh, and low lectin, like what, like, what would you say would be the drawbacks and advantages of each? And, and for that regular person out there who just wants to eat healthy, is there a particular diet out there that you would recommend? Yeah. So I typically recommend the paleo program. It okay. has the most broadest appeal. Um, it's the easiest to follow and you can travel and you really, it's really basically how I eat okay. and it really focuses on quality as best you can. I mean, you're going to have a hard time when you travel and going to restaurants, yeah. but at home, I'm really picky about what I buy. And so you're having quality animal protein. You're having um, an, a, an unlimited amount of vegetables any way you want them, but deep fried. We take out the peas and the string beans and corn. And then you're having sweet potato and yams, and then you're eating really good fats. So avocado, olives, um, uh, good oils, not inflammatory oils like vegetable oils and sunflower oils and soybean oils that are also found in supplements, which is crazy. And yeah. a lot of restaurants, a lot of good restaurants use soybean oil and vegetable oil because it's super cheap yeah. and looking for margin. So, and then they'll say, oftentimes say, oh, we have a blend. I go, really, what's your blend? There's always some, some bad, crappy inflammatory oils. So you've got to be really diligent about that. Um, and then you're having some eggs, nuts, seeds, um, and, um, you know, your, your olive oil and your, your uh, olives and, and, and avocado and coconut stuff. So that to me is the, is, is a really easy program to use. Um, and you can pretty much go anywhere. You can bring snacks with you and, and you can function and you'll definitely see the benefits of decreasing that systemic inflammation and increasing the good gut health, which are paleo. 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 Okay. Yeah. Good, big, big fan of paleo. Love that. Um, and you mentioned detox. Um, what are the benefits of detoxification and why should the audience out there do it actually regularly? So the sad fact is, is that um, the average American female comes in contact with just over 200 toxins just before she's left the bathroom each morning. Yikes. So if you wow. start to read your ingredients in your shampoo and men too, but shampoo, conditioner, shaving cream, perfume is just all toxins. Deodorant, us women, we shave our armpits and then we just put all those toxins, those perfumes, dyes, chemicals, aluminum, all that stuff into the, into the body. Um, and then perhaps we slather on some sunscreen, which is a great source of toxins as well. We've got nail polish that's in the embedded in the nails day in and day out throughout the day and the, throughout the night, hair dyes, um, moisturizers, and then let's slap on some makeup, shall we? So we, we do that and hopefully our makeup doesn't have any talc in there. And, you know, we know that causes cancer. So we're just constantly, um, barrage with all these toxins. So you're basically when toxins come into the building and it's not just foods you eat, it's all those, those things I was mentioning. Yeah. We've got things that you put on your skin and things that we breathe, right? So it's the paint, it's the anti-retardants and the sheets and the, and you know, it's just everywhere. It's, it's in your furniture and your clothes and your office and it's everywhere. I um, mean, it's in your car. I mean, we're just always uh, breathing them in, we put them on the, our skin and we eat and drink them. So that, those are the three ways we get toxins. Yeah. And when we get them, they come into the building and the body and the liver goes, okay, I'm, it's at the guard gate and the liver says, okay, are you 
animal or vegetable, like you're may you're you're a a, a a piece of my machinery that I can process. Yeah. And if you are okay, you go right and you go through that line, you go right through the system. But if you're not, it says, okay, I got to turn you into an enzyme so that I can kind of fake it and get you through the through the system. Um, and what happens is we store them in fat cells and fat tissues and the liver, and it slows down the liver. And so when we detox, we see an increase in energy, we see better sleeping, better regularity. Some people see constipation completely go away. And some people just see, you know, more um, heavier volume. Um, we see better skin. I can't tell you how many people tell me their skin just clears up right away. Um, uh, their brain fog goes. Brain fog is a big one from a toxic buildup. Yeah. And, um, and their mood, I had a woman come in to see me a few years ago who said, I don't know what you did to me, but my husband always annoys me and he doesn't annoy me at all. So your mood is Take just, my money. <laughs> right, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah. the, you know, it, it just makes you feel good. Like think about it this way. If you kept putting boxes and crap in your garage, at some point, you're not going to be able to park your garage, your car in there, right? Yeah. You got to clean out the garage, right? We got to clean out our closets. We have to clean out our body as well. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously you mentioned like a lot of drivers of disease there, you know, obviously our diet, our environment, things like that. And just things that we use every like day. I mean, you mentioned a deodorant. I heard somebody saying that the other day with the aluminum, the parabens and the phthalates and all that, like, I specifically always go for that deodorant that doesn't have any of those. Um, some guy was actually preaching, don't use deodorant at all. It should, you know, you should smell good if your diet is good, but I don't know if I'm going to go that far, but. Um, I don't use any deodorant. What's that? I don't use any deodorant. You don't use any deodorant. Okay, there you go. You're another one. Wow. Okay. So, I mean, what, what can people do out there to boost their immune system naturally? Like what are things they can do on, that they can do on a day to day? Okay. I just want to add, cause I forgot with the, with the detox weight loss is a huge side effect, yes. of weight, but it's not a weight loss program, but you will lose weight. Women the lose side effect. Yes, the side effect. Exactly. Women yeah. lose about four to seven men lose a little bit more, but, um, but it's not a reason to do it. It's a nice perk, but it's not a reason. So your question was to me, boosting immunity boosting naturally. Immunity. Okay. So taking out sugar, is like the best thing you could possibly do. Sugar eats white blood cells, right? It shrinks the thymus gland, that's our first protector. White blood cells is what we need for immunity. So, um, and, and sugar also eats up our good gut bacteria in our gut. 75 to 85% of our immune system is produced in our gut. So if we've got a leaky gut, if we've got a compromised gut, if we've just been taking antibiotics, you are susceptible to low immunity. Now I test you in my stool test. I'm looking for a secretary IgA. And that tells me, it gives me kind of an army count. I take, I take roll call. I want to know how many protective agents you've got in your gut. So cleaning up your gut is the best thing you can do. You can all, in addition to taking out sugar, foods that will help boost your immunity. I mean, vitamin D is huge for immunity and you can find that in mushrooms. You can find it in eggs, um, some fish, um, but zinc is also really, really critical. So I throw a lot of, uh, pumpkin seeds, either in my salad or in my shake, not too many, but just some, that's a really, really good source of zinc. The other foods that are really high in zinc are oysters, clams, um, uh, shrimp. Those are high in zinc. Oysters are really, really high in zinc. So those are things that would help boost Im immunity. I have my immune ultra. So we suck on those it's zinc and, um, elderberry, and elderberry is really, really good for immunity. Leafy greens. I mean, leafy greens are packed with nutrients, packed with vitamins and minerals. So the more leafy greens you have, um, a lot of leafy greens have a lot of calcium and some uh, garbanzo beans are high in calcium. Sesame seeds are super high in calcium. Nobody would know that, but they're really good. I sprinkle them on a lot of food. Um, and tahini, tahini, I use in my shakes a lot. There's really basically no net carbs. It's a great fat. Um, it's great oils and, um, it's got high calcium. So I use that a lot in shakes. Um, those are things that you can do. Just take out the chemicals and bring in the food that we were actually born to eat. So a lot of leafy greens. Got it. So 
not necessarily for those with autoimmune, but maybe some just natural supplements that, you know, people that don't have those issues can take just to kind of maintain their immune system and just maintain their health. What would you say those are? I mean, obviously you mentioned a lot of foods that provide those, but in addition to foods like that, would you add on any on top besides the vitamin D3 and like, let's say a zinc supplement, are there any others yeah. that you would include? Um, so the vitamin D levels are huge. So I just want to talk about the labs because labs usually go 30 to 60 in mm -hmm. functional nutrition. We like it 80 to hundred. So it, yeah. people are really low. I test everybody, even professional athletes that I work with that are in the sun all day. They're a little bit low. Really? So we like it between 80 and hundred. We just don't synthesize it really well. And um, so if we have low cholesterol, it's hard to absorb our vitamin D and we need vitamin D to make bones. So vitamin D is really, really important, but you have to have a good one. Like I won't mention any names, but there's a lot of mainstream brands that have uh, soybean oil in them. And how many I use, I mean, should we be taking on a regular basis? Because I know like back in the day, the FDA approved like a very low amount and now doctors are kind of coming around now. It's, I think it's up to like 2000. I take more than that personally. Um, just because I'm not afraid of it. I mean, I, I take it with the vitamin K2 and all that, but I mean, how much would you recommend the average person take a vitamin D3? So I can't say average because I only do it when I see labs, but gotcha. I would say get, get tested. I take between 5,000 and 10,000. My levels, I just got my labs back are really high. So now I'm kind of, I took a couple of weeks off and now I'm doing every other day, but then I'll get... 5,000, my vitamin D3, K, D3 ultra with vitamin K is 5,000. So I'll do one 5,000 every other day right now. And then I'll bring it into every day, but you always want to follow your numbers. So labs, yeah. yeah, if you're, if your lab is like at 27, I would tell you for sure, take 10,000 a day and get retested in three months. It should move the needle pretty well. Yeah. The, lab, the labs um, don't lie. <laughs> labs don't lie. Exactly. Exactly. Oh. So um, you know, just the anti-inflammatory, um, cause it, being inflamed, you know, a, a systemic inflammation is, is a driver of disease. So I'm always, I, I bring down all my, my blood sugars. I take berberine balance, um, to make sure I don't have blood sugar issues. I take uh, my fab five for all those anti-inflammatory. And I do, I put vitamin C in my, my shake every morning. And then I do my gut reboot, which is a glutamine slippery, um, marshmallow root. I'm always trying to heal my gut. So having that really good gut is going to help with that immunity. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. I mean, before we finish, can you uh, talk a little bit about your book and just in general, like who, who is this book for, who can it help and how can it help? Yeah. So my book food frame diet is a four letter word is for anybody who eats. So right, yeah, that covers a pretty wide range, yeah. right? Um, I, I wrote the book because I really, I, I, I realize that this is such a successful methodology that I work it with people one-on-one -on -one in my office. And I feel almost like I, I shouldn't be keeping this secret all to myself because, you know, out of all the diets we've been doing and out of all the eating programs, we all know that person who's coworker or next door neighbor or sister or brother lost, you know, 40 pounds on keto. And then when they tried it, they didn't lose anything. They might've even gained, Right. So no. that should tell us that one diet type is not right for all. And these books keep coming out with, oh, here's a new philosophy. Everybody should be eating like this. Well, some people eat like that and thrive, but not yeah. everybody does. So yeah. we should know at this point in 2022, we should be eating customly to our health status. So food frame is for anybody who hasn't found what their food frame is. And you can take the quiz on my website or read the book. And it really breaks down which diet type, the six different diet types and my detox. And it really breaks down who's best suited for each one. It gives a very comprehensive list of foods to eat and foods to avoid. There are about seven recipes, really easy because I don't have a ton of time to cook and I don't like bad food. So they're really delicious and they're really easy. Seven different recipes to do for each diet type. I really get into blood work and stool tests and I talk about fiber and protein and I have a lot of um, testimonials of people um, who have gone through this and who have really been able to turn around their health. And uh, does insurance cover all of these tests by chance? 
So sometimes, most of the time, your insurance will cover the stool test, depending okay. on the insurance you have. But I order labs um, not through insurance because, unfortunately, insurance does not cover as comprehensive as we'd like. It's yeah. very sad. They'll cover one marker for thyroid. I order all 10 markers. Gotcha. Uh, they'll cover maybe one for blood sugar. I order four. So, I mean, obviously, at the end of the day, health is wealth. So it's like you want if, this, if there's any type of investment that you want to make, it's this one. Like, what can a patient expect to spend to kind of figure things out, get all the tests they need so that they can get on the right track? My typical first blood draw is about three hundred dollars. That's not including any female hormone panel. So if they're having some struggles in that department, I would order that as well. And that's about a 200, a little about 250 or so more. And then I order an, uh, the gene mutation MTHFR for every person I work with. And that um, the lab that I use is like $280 for that. But we also have less expensive options, about 145, I think it is for a cheek swab. Um, and so that and your stool test, you know, you're in a little bit at the beginning and then the detox and stuff, but you're worth it. <laughs> it's totally worth it. Yeah. Totally, totally, totally worth it. And I mean, I have found amazing things. I mean, I, you know, we've, we've found some pretty dangerous things with young people that wouldn't suspect it. There was no symptoms and they were able to divert um, their life. I mean, really, really yeah. you know, be proactive with things. And I mean, it changes the trajectory of your life. Yeah. And can people work with you uh, virtually, like from anywhere or? I work with people all over the world. Amazing. Uh, yeah. Where can so, they find you as far as a website? Yeah. So my website is Risa Grew Nutrition. That's R-I-S-A-G-R-O-U-X nutrition.com. My book is available there. It's available um, on Amazon, on Barnes and Noble and Target. Um, I have a course that I just released that I'm super excited about. I put everything I know into this course and it's called achieving optimal thyroid health because people really struggle with their thyroid. And this is for everybody, whether you have nodules or you had it taken out with cancer, or whether you have Hashimoto's or Graves or hyper or hyper, it really addresses everything you need to know about thyroid. Um, and people can find me on Instagram and um, TikTok now and Facebook at Risa Grew Nutrition. Amazing. And uh, before we started the pod, I heard you had a little special treat for our listeners today. Just for you guys, oh. I am doing a 10% discount on my RGN Detox. Two weeks, collagen shakes and food. It's not about starvation. Eat when you're hungry, don't when you're not, but it's specific foods to help um, decrease your toxic load and to help you thrive. So you'll have that code um, and uh, your listeners are able to have that for three months after the uh, after it drops. Amazing. Risa, thank you so much for coming on. I, I learned a lot today. I, I love all the, the knowledge that you were able to give. And I know that the audience is definitely going to uh, uh, benefit from this talk. So I appreciate you. Well, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. We'll talk soon. Take care.